This guy is nuts. Is he really making daily recordings of his possible divorce and releasing it as a podcast? They both cheated on each other. She's making six figures and still doesn't contribute to any joint endeavors financially. Why is she still with him? Why is he still with her? I can't wait for the next episode. This helped me be a better wife. So this is how men think. I hate my husband less now. I understand my wife more now. These are some of the listener comments to the Divorce Diaries podcast. All over the map, I know. These anonymous accounts of events should resonate with anyone that has been married, is married, or is preparing for marriage and helps couples avoid pitfalls as they might prepare for marriage. Entire seasons are released on Patreon weeks before anywhere else at Divorce Diaries Podcast Patreon page. Link in description. Now for today's episode. I have about five to seven more days left in my home. Um, hello, little bird in the grass. Are you hurt? You must be. It's just a little bird laying in the grass. I don't know what's happening. I don't know. Sorry about that. I'm back to the recording now. The, I've got about five to seven more days left in my house um, before the before the new owners uh, come in and they commandeer the home. Um, we've already closed on it. It's gone. But I'm there cleaning up stuff and. This is the Rebooted Divorce Diaries podcast. If I ever post any episodes again, they're definitely posted with me having the mindset of I'm not angry, I am not uh, sad, um, and fully emotional like I was in the first bunch of episodes that I recorded where I was just crying. Crying in, in... just angry this is definitely the podcast that i wanted to start at the beginning i wanted to start a calm podcast from the perspective of a man that is just going on a journey of something many things a journey of self-discovery a journey of awakening a journey of maturity but I never wanted it to be from a place of anger like it was my wife cheated on me she's talking to kids behind our back my wife my wife and this I should have never if I would have just I if I had it all to do over again it was just a lot of anger a lot of anger it was just a it was just a tantrum it wasn't a mature processing of information it wasn't a mature articulation of information of what I now need Um, I don't need this podcast to be anything this podcast doesn't even have to exist but I need to be a more solvent man a man that like let's let's think about it I was a bit um, codependent You know what? I would I won't even say I was codependent. Let's just take that co and let's throw that shit in the trash. I was just fucking dependent on my wife. It was, it was just unfair. I um she's an average sized woman. She's got average sized shoulders, average sized legs. And I selfishly tried to put the weight of the world on her shoulders. A, a weight that no one can handle. No one can carry the entire weight from of, of what I was trying to put on her shoulders. I wanted her to be my, well, I guess I can say for sure, not always ready, but ready more often than not, intimacy partner, partner in business, raiser of my children, compromiser, Saver when I wanted to save, spender when I wanted to spend, person I can talk to about my problems, person I could help, person that would take all of my advice, whether I solicited to, whether they, whether she wanted me to or not. Just what the hell? 
it's just really, really, really unfair that much on, on one person. And that's what I did. Just put an unfair amount of pressure on my wife and why? Why did I do that? Um, I did that probably because I was a man that was not secure. Um, some friends have told me um, different occasions um, and they all have different, vastly different situations in their lives. Uh, I think it's one single, one's divorced, remarried, another one's single, um, maybe one was in a relationship, I don't really know, but he just kind of looked at me and they have all said at different times, like, you know, you should, um, you've got to be good being by yourself. And getting pregnant as a teenage dad with my, with my now wife, I just, um, I just, every decision that I ever made was based on the circumstance I was in. That doesn't mean that I would have, would not have made the exact same situation, the exact same choices to get married, to, you know, become a dad and, you know, in my, in my teens. And, you know, had I thought it through, I don't know if I would have chosen to got to get married or not have gotten married. All I know is I didn't think about it. That isn't an indictment on my marriage or, or my wife or that I was trapped into it or I just did it because I was doing the right thing. All I'm saying is as, an, as a point of honest reflection, I did not think about it. I didn't think about it. And for anyone else listening to this diary entry, male, female, husband, wife, whatever you are, think about those decisions that you made where you didn't, where you know that you didn't take the time to really consider if you should or shouldn't do something or why you will or won't do something. When that main ingredient of the whole why is missing, it's a really, really tough place to find yourself in after the fact, because I guess I always, maybe I was always restless or at least frustrated or vice versa. I was always frustrated or at least restless because I never really thought through what I was going to do and why. I never really considered it. Hey, wow, you got this girl pregnant, your girlfriend, um, that you think you love. Okay. You know, Hey, you think you love her. Do you love her? Okay. Um, yes, I do. How do you know? And then I could have gone through some kind of thought process to figure out what I meant by love. What does love mean to me? Am I really in love? Am I not in love? Um, if I am or aren't, what does that even mean? Is it significant? Do I? Okay, fine. We have a kid. Oh, do you have to get married? Well, this isn't the old West. There's no make an honest woman out of her. There's, there's none of that. There's just the choice to make. How are you? How's it going? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, it's just one of those things where one thing, just because it happened, doesn't mean the other thing has to happen. I remember this, <laughs> I remember this guy, I was at the, um, casino with my dad and I had never gambled before. And he was just always itching to take me to the casino and, and, I guess one of those kind of rite of passage things, father to son or something like that. And I'm like, okay, cool, dad, you know, let's go. Sounds good. We can go. And, uh, I'm at the, I don't know if it was craps or blackjack. I think it was blackjack. And I'm standing there with my dad. He's on my left and this guy's on my right. And he's kind of like, he's got his arms folded, but not in that fold where you cross your arms under your elbows, the fold where you're kind of almost hugging yourself, where you're hugging, holding both of your elbows underneath, almost like you're cold, that kind of, that kind of grip uh, on, on the underneath side of your elbows, which with your hands touching like your triceps, the back of your arms. And, um, he looked at me and he's like, hey, what's up, man? What's up, man? I'm like, Hey, what's going on, bro? And he's like, 
<sighs> fucked up tonight. Fucked up tonight, man. Fucked up. I'm like, whoa, whoa. What do you mean? What, what happened? And he's like, you know, came here with a G and uh, lost it. And you know, I did the thing you ain't supposed to fucking do. I did the thing you ain't supposed to fucking do. You know what that is? You know what that is? And I said, what, man? What? He's like, I went to the sock, man. I went to the sock. You went to the sock? He's like, yeah, man. Fucked up. I wasn't supposed to go to the damn sock. Bam. Lost that first G. Went to the sock. Shit, man. Lost that second G. Lost that second G. I'm like, oh, man. Jeez, that sucks, man. I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, man. You know what I mean? I don't know what else to say. I mean, I played sports kind of growing up, so I just kind of gave him one of these. Uh, you'll get him next time. I mean, it's all good. Don't don't worry about it. You know, buck up. <laughs> that was kind of my... But, 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 he, but he cut me off, and he's like, yeah, I made, made another fucking mistake, man. No shit you really ain't supposed to do. The shit you really ain't supposed to do. Fucked up again. I'm like, what do you mean? What, what happened? And now I'm intrigued because I'm like, well, what the hell? He... He lost his he lost his gambling money, then he lost his emergency money. How much worse could this shit get? He's like, man, go out to the car. Go out to the car and I go in the glove box. You know you ain't supposed to ever go in the glove box. Yeah, I had my, you know, used all my money. Then I went to the sock. Then I went out to the glove box. Got the rest, came back in. Man, I ain't got shit, man. What am I supposed to tell the bitch when I get home? What am I supposed to tell the bitch when I get home? And I'm like. Oh my gosh, that was an amazing, amazing thing to hear. To hear this guy, basically, he found himself just caught up in the circumstances of life and he never thought it through. What should I do in this situation and why? Should I continue gambling? You know, let's, let, let's, take it as back as far as we should take it back he wasn't the most polished looking guy he didn't speak very well he didn't seem like he had lots of luck gambling he seemed like he did what the basic casino spread says most of the patrons if you want to call them that, gamblers, what they will do when they come to the casino. He seemed to hold up that status quo. He seemed to lose, like most of us do. I have a perspective on the casino. I enjoy my time there, but I come there as if it's an amusement park or um, I'm going on a shopping spree or I'm going on a vacation. I'm going to go here and give you money in Costa Rica. You're going to allow me to stay in your villa and you're going to give me some food. Um, and I'm going to get to put my body in your pool, use your shower. I'm going to leave and you're going to have some people that I don't know clean the room. That's what I'm paying you for. I'm paying you for that experience. I'm going to the movies. I'm going to give you money. You're going to let me sit in this chair and stare at this monstrosity of a screen until the movie's over for two hours and 20 minutes. And then I'm going to get to leave. Occasionally, you'll also let me go to the bathroom and come back and sit down again. That's what you'll even let me show up a few minutes early when I give you my $15 for my fucking movie ticket. That's what you'll let me do. So I, I kind of come out knowing, yeah, I've got, you know, about 20 bucks in my pocket and I'm going to go and see a movie. And then I will come back and the 20 bucks will not be in my pocket. It will be at the theater. So I gave them the money. This guy... He needs to really walk back sort of like I needed to when we got pregnant. I just need to look at it and just back off and just say, okay, if I'm him, all right, I don't usually win when I go and play blackjack. Okay. So maybe I'll leave the $1,000 at home because I usually lose it all and I won't play the $25 tables because I typically lose that. So, but the thing is, my goal is to play blackjack. So, if you want to play blackjack, I think the thing you should probably do is maybe go from the $25 tables to the $10 tables and maybe go from bringing your $1,000 to bring in $250.
And you don't put any money in your sock. You don't put any in a glove compartment because you understand your own personal compulsion. So is your goal to go there and win more rent money? If so, look at the average person. They come out losers. Or is your goal to just enjoy yourself and play some blackjack? And it would be nice if you left with more than you came with. Great. Understood. It would be great if you left with more than you came with. So there you go. Bada bing, bada boom. But instead, he just got caught up on the wave. He just wanted to go to the casino. So he just, just those circumstances just let him down. Like, like Tom and Jerry, when you watch it and they're just like, they're fighting and they're in that little dust plume and their arms and legs are coming out and they're making all the sounds and hissing and hawing and punching and kicking and screaming and meow, 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 meow. And they're rolling down a hill and they roll down this hill and they're collecting things as they go into that dust plume. Then you start to see chair legs in the dust plume and, and other pieces of furniture and they roll over animals or people and they're in there and you see legs and things flowing and this, that plume gets bigger and bigger and bigger. That's what it is. That, that, that's what happened with me, I think. In, in my life, I just, the snowball just started going downhill. I never really thought about anything. I never thought like, oh, hey, oh, this is the situation that I'm in. What should I do now and why? How do I feel? And a lot of times, a lot of well-meaning, well-intended people just kind of do things. And to be honest and fair, my wife was maybe like a lot of women. You're kind of looking to be led. And I know for a fact now, I wasn't a good leader. I didn't lead my wife well. I didn't lead my family well. You know, at times, I mean, sometimes I did okay, I think. But I think for the most part, um, for, the, for the most part, you really, men sort of need, I think, um, some real coaching up. There's, this re there's these really cool things called like master classes, where if you like really want to learn photography or something like that, you, um, you really want to learn photography, you... Um, can sign up for this course and you sit down and you look at eight hours of video of some really famous photographer that wants to charge you about 60 bucks for to see his life and you know see him photographing things and stuff like that and then he's editing photos and you're learning stuff from him i think um happily married happily divorced happily dating happily in long-term relationship men above the age of maybe 50 probably need to have a nice consortium where they're teaching younger men. If your father isn't there to do it for you, and if your father doesn't know what the hell he's talking about, there should be some sort of, um, <laughs> in a way, almost like a licensing and qualification test for men to get married. So they really know what it takes. Um, because it, it, a lot of the teaching, I don't think it has to have anything to do with the woman. And it's like the best qualified men to get married should probably be over the age of 35. I am north of that age now, and I understand um, now what I know and what I don't know. And what I don't know far outweighs what I actually do know. So, yeah, men really, really need... Um, younger men really need to be discouraged from getting married at a younger age. They really need to be encouraged on focusing on one thing at a time because us men, we're really um, sort of dumb creatures to begin with. And we have, we're sort of dumb creatures to begin with in, a, in the sense that um, we process information differently from women. Um, my wife and, and um, my daughters and every woman that I know in my life, very good with dates, very good with um, remembering things that happened, series of events, the order that they happened. Now, don't don't get me wrong. When their information is off, it's off. When they don't know what they're talking about, they they don't know what they're talking about. That doesn't. Um, I'm not trying to act like women just like remember all details in such vivid imagination. Women remember what they remember, and then they don't forget it. 
So if a factual series of events is being recalled by a woman, that is exactly how she remembers it happening. That is exactly what was said. That is exactly what was done. Exactly what was carried is exactly where you went is exactly the time of day, all of those things. And men usually like me, I'm a, I'm a perfect example of somewhat of a stereotypical guy. I do not necessarily remember what you said. I remember that you brought up a subject. I remember it broadly. I remember that you brought up a specific subject. I remember that you asked me to do something and I can tell you what I did based on what I remember hearing. Now, if you told me something in great vast detail while I was doing something else, I'm likely going to fuck it up because my brain that multitasks worse than the average woman's brain, I'm likely going to miss some details. I'm going to paint the house the color of off-white that you wanted. But if you mentioned off-white, beige, blah, 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 and there were three pans of cans of paint there and you said eggshell one time just once and you and there was a flurry of other paint colors that were mostly off-white beige off-white off-white you mentioned off-white light tan off-white light tan off-white light tan and then at the very end you're like eggshell just one time one time eggshell and then I didn't paint the thing eggshell and I painted it tan or something the word that you mentioned 48,000 times and you're like, what the hell? How could you, you painted the room the wrong color. You said tan. I did not say tan. I said, I said eggshell. It's like eggshell. When did you say eggshell? You kept talking about tan. We walked through the aisles. You were talking about tan. Yes. And then at the end, I changed my mind and I said eggshell. It's like, oh, right. I, I vaguely remember you saying that it was just, you mentioned tan so many times, I guess that was just baked in my head. And it's like, oh, but I was very specific right at the end. And it's like, oh my gosh, it's like that, but that's how, that's how it sometimes goes um, as a man. So that's why men, we really need to have that. Oh, let's figure out why we're doing what we're doing. Let's do one thing at a time. Let's finish high school. Let's focus on that sport that we think we're so good at, that we think we may be able to play on the next level. Let's then go to college and only have casual girls to focus on, the sport that we like, and our schoolwork. We can't handle much more. Okay, now you're going to start to get a long-term girlfriend in college but you're still juggling sports and your sports are starting to suffer and your grades are starting to suffer and your relationship isn't as good as it could be because you're not supposed to be in a relationship just yet right now. Uh Oh, okay. That that's the thing. Us guys are like this thing, then that thing, this thing, then that thing. And the older guys that have been there and done that, if they're somewhere about, because I'm, I'm in my, I'm, I'm north of 35, like I said. So I understand things right now. And I also understand what we probably need to need to know. And I don't know what I'm going to be like at, at 40, 45, 50, 55. I don't know. But after I've been through a good amount of life and I'm, I'm thoughtful about the coaching up I want to give younger guys, I would definitely say it doesn't matter what situation you're in. You're only going to be able to do so many things at one time and don't be an unfair husband like I was and get married, get married to your wife and not be able to be there for her in the way that she's going to <sighs> needs not a good word. I want to go with the word require. She's going to require you to be there for her in, a, in specific ways. And it's non-negotiable. She's not going to be happy or even understand that she's just going to, oh, she'll just wait by the wayside while you just kind of, you don't come home and you're working late. It's like, you know, she might say, oh, yeah, I mean, it's fine. I mean, we've got to support this lifestyle that we want. And, you know, we've got to sacrifice she's going to get lonely and she's going to need to fill that loneliness 
Will she fill it with food, purchases, girlfriends, children, pets, trying to still force her way in because she really wants the time from you, so monopolizing your time, other men and their affections, there will be a void that needs to be filled. Now, can you do it? Okay, if you don't think that you have the cycles to put into making a relationship work with a woman, you really shouldn't be in one. You really have to do a really good job understanding and that's where the coaching up from other men is going to come and that in this diary entry that i have going right now that's what i want more than anything else i just want men to really take their time like i did not and make sure that they're make sure that they are thinking about their decisions before they make it as they make it, just think about your decisions. So you're not just caught up in life and just being carried along and you're not making any decisions on your own. You're just carried along by life. It's just, it's not a good way to wake up and see the world and find out, hello. It's not a good way to see the world and wake up and just find that, oh wow, you're just, you just look up and you're like, what did I ever decide? Did I ever think about anything? Did I ever consider anything myself? Did I ever make my own decisions? And when you look up and you look at yourself in the mirror, like I am now, and I'm like, man, I never even really, I never slowed down enough to even think about what I wanted, what would be best for those around me, what, what's, what's best for me. I never thought about it. And that is what made me and makes me a really not good father and husband. I was not in the driver's seat of my life. I just wasn't. Wow. That was the Divorce Diaries podcast. The Daily Saga will continue tomorrow. The full season's episodes are on Patreon now. Subscribe for early access. Click the Patreon link in the description. Hopefully, these entries help our anonymous recorder as a form of his own personal therapy. That's his hope and his intention. Will these recordings of life's curveballs lead this family to the best resolution in the end? We'll keep listening. New episodes are released daily on all podcast players, but all episodes are available on Patreon at Divorce Diaries Podcast Patreon page. Until next time.